Where is he? Where is thy master? My master? I have no master, except the sun and the moon. We shall have none of thy wickedness tonight. Benjamin, where is the minister? In the fields, praying. Praying? When he is ill and should pray at home. I found him and spake to him, saying, Pardon, Reverend, you are wanted at home. But he would not leave, citing to me his bondage to this world. So I danced and makes a trick until he laughed. Then we took hands, and he followed me up the hill into town. But he did grieve inside, and fell upon his hands. And I fell with him, for he was taken with coughing and trembling. And he spoke the names of Jesus Christ and Emmanuel, saying he was not prepared, until his voice bade him farewell. Then we came here. But, but he is not with thee, Benjamin. Where is he? Across the road. Visiting the widow Perkins. There is no government in this house when a sick man shall be stubborn and refuse to lay in bed. He cometh. John. John, Reverend Allen has come to make your will. Thank you. Will you retire first? To my chair, if you will join me. Clean. It is purified, John. You shall find more comfort in it tonight. Reverend Harvard, you should stay in bed with your wife by your side and not encourage another bout. John, the Reverend spoke to you. Did you not hear him? I hear Christ, my eternal Savior, and sometimes man. Forgive me, Reverend. My fall those consume me. A fallen Puritan is a chosen Puritan. For that we give thanks. But you must not wander in your state, John. More trouble will come to you, if not the meat, than the soul. I had the boy with me. Where is Benjamin? Ben acted as my good shepherd. Thou didst show me grace upon the hill and help the Lord straighten me. Thou art blessed in all of New England. Where did you wander off to, John? I was persuaded to walk in the fields where the warmth of our Lord greeted me. And did the Lord not talk to you there, urging you to come home? Nay, I spent the day with Thomas. A pupil, John? Reverend, when the sun was highest, I did see my brother in the great oak, smiling upon me. And there I stood, listening as he spake words of wonder about paradise and God's creation. A spirit, John. Are you not confusing it with a healthy branch or bright leaf? I asked him, Dost thou still love me? He nodded. And we cried. When Thomas left, I stood in awe before heaven and composed a new lesson. It does sound splendid. In spirit with the very words he spake of truth divine and the vision of Christ's love. I would love to hear your lesson, John, for it may help us carry your loss. The Reverend will support me. I shall share my sermon with the congregation this week. Pastor Sims shall deliver the sermons and the teachings this Sunday, John, until you are well enough to stand before our congregation. And not faint as you did last week. 
My feet grew tired, that is all. But your knees were strong. And what about your tongue? A goodly lesson requires two hours, John, but four. I wondered why the congregation did not faint with you. They shall hear equally about reason as revelation. Stick to the scriptures, John. Sin and Satan. Scold them and point your finger at them, but do not treat the pulpit like a college until you are made pastor. This disease does astonish me, for it makes me wary to hear more talk about evil. Good night to you, Reverend. John, the Reverend is here to make your will. Allow him to finish his business. I bequeath and my estate. You, Ben, I have my hat. Now go. Reverend, please be patient with him. He shall improve with company. Ever since we landed here, his body has wandered, and his soul has been dry and thirsty. Which psalm is that, John? Psalm 63. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee, in a dry and thirsty land. Where no water is. My husband returns. Thank you, Mrs. Harvard. You are by degrees a stubborn Puritan this evening, John. But I admire you, for you are a scholar and the most pious of men. I shall wait upon you as the Lord did wait upon Saul. Until you are ready. Change your clothes, John. And why don't you rest a while until supper is ready? I think I can sit a while without fainting, thank you. Benjamin. Benjamin. Fetch John's book and speak to him. He does wonder some more tonight. John, I think I wish to be educated and read the Bible and be a pastor like you. May Anne and I be educated? A minister's wife has no time for reading, Benjamin. Nor his wasteful servant. What will you do if you were educated, Ben? If I were educated, I will watch the sky all day and write words in books. Then I will travel the world and speak how the Sun King cares for us. Every night when he grows sleepy and ready for bed, he wakes the Moon King to protect and watch over us. And if after learning you doubt there is a sun king or moon king? Then all the stars will expire like this. And in the dark I will make a kiss. With lively song and dance till I am too tired and must go sleepy by. And the next morn I will in fear lurch 
on hands and knees to John's church. That is a good boy. And good apprentice, John, well done. And before the altar, I will make a face like so, and quietly inform God he is next to go. Blasphemy. Lay thy hand on thy mouth, Satan. Art thou not John's servant to be instructed and reformed? Nay, thou art not deserving of education. Then sit thee down, for thou makes my eyes dizzy. Do not provoke the reverend or God with thy foolishness. I, Reverend John Harvard, the surviving son of Robert and Catherine, having been baptized on the 29th of November, 1607, in St. Savior's Church, and having received the degree of Master of Arts from Emanuel College, was admitted as member of the Charlestown Church Covenant on the 6th of November, 1637. It is written that I did die there less than one year later on... soon. And before dying in this place did bequeath my... did bequeath my property in an orderly fashion and on the same date. Having no family in England and no heirs in the colony, my estate is undivided. And stood at a sum of Sixteen hundred pounds? John, you are a wealthy man. With a wealthy widow. And my books? Your library? I estimate a total of two thousand pounds. With no children. That is a great sorrow. He has a servant. Who only serves half the time. Better half than none. May I have half your money, John? And what will you do with a thousand pounds, Benjamin Stowe? I will hire my own servant, like John hired me. And I will be kind to him and feed him well and pay him one pound a week. And he can hire his own servant at ten shillings. And that servant can live with us and hire another servant at twelve pence. And that servant can hire another servant at... Six pence, and we will hire a fifth servant at one threepence, and they will all be grateful to serve you. <laughs> ben, if you are done calculating the wages of your many servants, did you disobey your master again? No, mistress. I did convert thee from a sinner and appoint thee servant in thy house. And did thou not bring an unholy charge with thee? No, master. Come hither. What is that I see in the corner? Be gone. You cannot stay here. <laughs> That's it, scare the cunning devil. There he goes, hit him on the head. You foul spear, go. Harder, tell him King Charles is his father. Send him home to England. You're banished from John's home. <laughs> devil, get off me, you wretched little demon. Restrain him. Benjamin, stop. John, you tease him too far. Now do a little dance, Ben. Show the devil we will not host his company tonight. <laughs> send him off to England, send him on his way. Back to the wing, and we'll wish him sleep all day.
Oh, Reverend, speak to him. He needs your prayers. John Harvard, you are a sick man, and your house is charged with wickedness. By neglecting government in your place and encouraging sin in your servant, you do welcome more evil. He is gone. If he returns, I promise to hurry him out. Benjamin, take John's collar. And while you have this broom, will you sweep the floor? Anne, you're my evening candle. And what about during the day? During the day he has the Lord. Yes, Emmanuel is with me always. Reverend, have you a wife in waiting? Not that I know of. A godly wife comes first, Reverend. Before children. Before her husband. A good wife is there planting spiritual seeds. Might the Reverend visit the widow Perkins? She has a handsome house with many acres which she does not use. And not many winters to use them, I'm told. I admit I have at times felt affection for the lonely widow. But I am not inclined to pour new wine into quite an old bottle. Mrs. Perkins bade John spend an hour with her today, blessing her chickens. Which are very old, as herself. And did you produce the miracle of an egg from her ancient hens? Two. What I kept for thee, Ben. Thank you. Oh, thank you, John. I shall keep this gift and build for the little box and carry it about all day and worship it as the moon king. Thou shalt give it to Anne for tomorrow's meal. It'll feel more royal in thy belly than in a box. Be gentle with it. As never before, Ben. Now, go find John's robe. His breeches are torn. Benjamin, stand still and stop leaning. Now, hold them up. I cannot. Benjamin, you've been out all day and have done nothing. Look at the water to be changed, and at the pile of clothes to be washed, and at the bed that I made. Now. But why must I wear them? Have you not seen the tear in them? Do you want the Reverend to be losing his breeches during Sunday service? He shall not lose them if I am still wearing them. He shall stand at the pulpit with no pants on and point to me, saying, My servant hath stole my breeches. Arrest him. <laughs> John will never make such a foolish spectacle. And they will shackle me in irons and ask me, Why did I steal these holy breeches? And I will say, because the reverend's wife has sewed them too tight. Is that your excuse for not working all day? It is the cause, first and last.
John? John, will you read scripture to us? Amen. I had hoped to hear you teach, John. Faith cometh by hearing. The Lord knows your servant needs it. Pastor Sim says John is the finest teacher on the hill. He has heard John preaching and shed many tears and said he will make pastor one day and bless us all. Anne. Did Nathaniel visit us today? Master Regent has not been here since three weeks ago, John. You should not ask him to visit every day. You are not the widow Perkins. Who is Nathaniel? Master Regent is a master in Newtown. He visits John often. They talk of many learned things. I like Master Eaton, for he brings me seeds. Strong seeds, Ben. Keep them for they will turn into a mighty oak. Nathaniel is planting a new college, Reverend, for the education of our young brethren. Like in Cambridge, the printing press and an apple orchard. I have promised him several books. Is he a clerk? No. He was not ordained. Then he will bring it all to ruin. <laughs> I knew Nathaniel during my years at Emmanuel. He and I and Anne's brother spent seven blissful years learning and praying. He has blossomed here in this land and he has a vision. So does Governor Winthrop. That we hold fast to our covenant, every man on town hill and every clergyman in church, free from God's wrath which is sure to befall England. And by our election we shall be saved. Our families, our children, cleansed of ritual and false visions, only those ordained with spiritual learning can begin this important work. Welcome, blessed governor, ruler of the new world. Speak to us, holy governor. Thou art blessed among all men. Possess and improve this land as in Genesis. And what God does not give thee, thou may take. John, he dishonors the Lord again. Govern him! Benjamin, stop. And listen to Reverend Allen. He is educated, and thou art not. Do not preach to him about our charitable leader, or the Bible. And have you a small piece of bread? Thank you. Reverend, you misunderstand me. See this small loaf? is nearest my lips and will bless me. But Anne does bless me more, for she has learned to bake it. By the asking of her, I do produce a vision in her mind which precedes this good food. Therefore, any man with vision can create wonders which all men shall one day need. And when you are pastor, will you sprinkle the sacrament with native spices? Administer magic and spells to make your earthly vision grow? You should know better than to speak thus, John. Or has your passion for learning replaced the road to paradise? If God plants into my heart the seeds of kindness here on earth, kindness on earth, and the desire to ah, see how quickly kindness becomes desire for education here in our modest plantation, that all men should learn. Learn to pray before we think and think before we do. If such a prayer comes to me, then I shall say it and see it be by any small measure. <sighs> John. Oh, Reverend, let him be. He's very weak. I warn you, Johannes. We are not here to learn. We are here to be saved. 
Without holy orders, your friend will make a despised schoolmaster and his earthly college the din of fantasy and heresy. Reverend, you speak like Governor Winthrop again. Do do do! Governor Winthrop did say, God has pursued the poor natives and swept them from this place with smallpox. Partake of the land. Take, take. Ha-ha-ha-ha-ha. My governor is ridiculed. But, this is not my house, and so I will not govern its tenants. I shall leave and return on the morrow to finish my business. My love to you, John. And to thee, Mrs. Harbour. Reverend Allen? Please stay for supper. The night is cold and... and I have not heard you speak of love before. Thank you, Mrs. Harbour. I shall stay and feel welcome and continue God's business, which I hope will last into the night. I shall say no more on the subject except this. The family is where we begin, with our women and children. We find our lessons here, before teaching the sons of man. John, would you like Reverend Allen to lead the prayer tonight? Join hands and hearts. Holy Father, tonight we sit before thee, yet the sins of the world have made us sick. Pride, envy, lust, and righteousness have corrupted us all. We have offended thee, and so we suffer. We commit our souls to thee and ask for swift punishment, that God Almighty may purify and prepare his chosen ones. By thy sovereign will, thou did appoint us to this noble place. As we accept and receive Christ's supper, we ask that you grant us communion for one more day, and that you teach us with wisdom which seeds to plant and what thorns to crush. Amen.
It is a sorrow your kin have all perished, John. They would benefit from your passing. We will see that your wife will receive a few goods. A few cattle, perhaps, and chickens. But you should sell your books. They are useless to a housewife. Or give them away. I will take some, but I am not a scholar. Books have never influenced my thinking. Can your servant read? Huh. There is only waste in that. Either you have found favor in God's eyes, boy, or you have not. He that would not labor must not eat. The Lord gave his promise. A few of us are his special property, here to pronounce his plan. The rest shall wait outside the court for the pleasure of the devil. But your master shall wait inside. Will you not, John? With the Puritan saints, bathed in eternal light and in evil no more. Ben, prepare my bed. John, you have not eaten. It is late. Too late to hear of evil. John. Evil dost rule our mortal lives, John Harvard. It is in the fabric of our earthly cares. All around us lie the avenues of temptation to humor us and deceive us. Take care that you do not shut yourself from what is called evil, for you do shut yourself from God's blessings which do follow evil. Benjamin, prepare my bed. As a Puritan, you are a saint, but as a clergyman, you test God. Admitting a sinner into your house with all his unnatural manners, yet neglecting to discipline him, that is the sin of pride. It is no wonder you wander the fields and speak of spirits and visions while you are dying. Let go. That is my charity. I mean your disciple. Let go. Benjamin, prepare my bed. Johannes Harvard, the covenant of grace hangs over you tonight, yet thou art fallen beyond faith. John. Fear not, Mrs. Harvard. He is not near death. Only pride suffers tonight. Benjamin, help him undress. Pray with me, Benjamin. He needs our prayers.
sit still, and I shall teach thee a new hymn. Follow my finger. Lo, how a rose air blooming from tender stem hath sprung. Of Jesse's lineage coming, as men of old have sung. It came a flowered bride amid the cold of winter, when half spent was the night. I say it was foretold it, the rose I have in mind. With Mary we behold it, the Virgin Mother kind, to show God's love aright. She bore to men a Savior, when half spent was the night. O flower whose fragrance tender with sweetness fills the air, dispel in glorious splendor the darkness everywhere. True man, yet very God, from sin and death he save us and lighten every Lord. And yes, John. And is he here? Who, John? Thomas. Your brother is sleeping in England. Remember? I heard him singing in the tree. That was Reverend Allen's voice. Where's Nathaniel? Master Eden will not be coming tonight. He lives far away. It's late. Please rest. Benjamin? Your master wanders again. Please fetch a stick for him to hold on to and to keep him in this world. Hold on to this, John. And do you remember our covenant? The one we made before we sailed? To be faithful to one another until death. To love one another truly and as Christians. And to save the world by our example. I have broken our covenant. I have saved no one, not even Ben. John. John, you brought us here. You brought us to the road to paradise and to salvation. 
And we love you. We love you for it, John. You have a strong head at Harvard. And, and a soft heart for you, John Harvard. Ben. In the morning, I shall share my sermon with thee, the one I did write in my head. How did you get the quill in your head, John? Thou must pray, Ben, or we will never get there. Where? To paradise. On the other side of these walls is the Lord's garden, filled with learning and kindness, and hope for all things eternal. For me? But the reverend said... Ben, you straightened me upon the hill. Thou art elected tonight. Can Anne come? She will be there, welcoming us with a warm plate and roast supper. Will the reverend be there? Of course. All the reverends from all the churches. All the masters from all the schools. Then I'm not going. I've grown weary of his tongue clucking. Then I shall stay with thee until thou art ready. Take my hat, Ben. And my Bible. The first book I ever owned. Read from it, learn from it, and ask questions. It will guide thee farther than the sun. Reverend Allen. Yeah. We dare to join God in this land, uninvited and unannounced. Because we are saints, John. We are his chosen ones. Look at my hand. It does tremble, for I have no more time. You have eternity with Christ. Divine Father, teach us to pray, teach us to think, teach us to give. Amen. Reverend, this town, this hill, are we on God's road? Does it desire our seeds? Desiring or desiring not, we shall plant our crop and see what grows. I leave Anne one half of my estate. Encourage her to remarry, for she will not be alone. Yes, John. And the other half? To this broken vessel of one and thirty years, I leave nothing. May it waste and be forgotten. John, to whom do you give the other half of your estate? Johannes?
and that field behind the house. Now that you have built your home, are you set on planting corn in the spring? John has not told me his plans yet. I think we should wait until he's well, which might take all of winter. The sea crossing was difficult. John was ill every day. I almost lost him in the journey. But I stood beside him and he held on. And as he trembled, he did cry out my name, Anne, 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 until it was too painful to hear. And to arrive here and hear the news of his brother Thomas dying in England, God did spare John from the plague. But he, he has no one on this earth now. He communes with Thomas daily, more than with his wife. And I know that he, he misses London and his college and his family home. But he shall not return there. So I shall stay here, by him. And if you become a widow, with no children, I pity thee. The hope you nurtured in the crossing, only to be greeted by death in this new world. My father was a minister, my brother also, and John. They all preached that our future is here that New England will be as near to him and salvation as possible. Thus, if I become a widow, I will take John's Bible and read it, knowing that in death he gave my soul lasting peace. You truly are one of the saints, Anne. If you'll allow me. I should like to read that Bible to you one day. Reverend Allen. Forgive me.
and bed. John, I hurried as soon as Mrs. Perkins sent word. Nathaniel, my friend and brother. Stay with us, John. I have so much to tell you about the school and our pupils. We have nine boys, John. Nine. Prepared to study. And it shall only increase. You must visit the new building when you are well and teach them law, theology, and the classics. They are thirsty to learn what you know. Master Eden. Benjamin. Is it truly you or a spirit? I told you he would come. Master Eaton, the Reverend was here. Look how he hurt me. I feel he meant only to instruct. But here, I brought thee some seeds. Oh, thank you. I shall put them in a little box and carry them about all day and worship them as the sun. No, Ben. Thou shalt give them to Anne, so she may plant them in the garden. Nathaniel has traveled a great distance to be with us. Dost thou have a gift? No, John. Fetch my hat. But you gave it to me. Look at it. Thou shall see something for his peoples there. Dost thou not see it? It awaits every man, steadfast like a Puritan, but filled with kindness and hope. No, John, it is empty. Then I shall give what thou cannot see. Nathaniel, I leave thee half my estate and my library of books for thy school, that learning may be sacred in the hearts and minds of every man as in this land, as in England. Ed! Ed! Hold on, John. Just like you did in the voyage, remember? You did shiver in the storm. Then, like now. But you held my hand. And you listened. You listened to every word I said. Listen, John. Send him to love, send him on his way. Back to love, leave love for Bishop sleep all day.
Thank thee, Father. Thank thee, Mother. And my children who are all with thee now. Bless them. And thank thee. Thank thee. Thank thee.